how you doing how you feeling welcome to this episode of search and report i'm back or did i ever leave actually no i was always out here um i just kind of like there's no excuse actually there's actually no excuse just been working been trying out some other methods of uh content as you all know i do besides gaming uh music fashion streetwear that sort of thing has always been my passion as well not passion but you know as you can tell from my background i've been collecting sneakers for quite some time now and uh it is you know something that i really enjoy doing and it's sort of something that i've always wanted to get into a little bit which is fashion um so i'm trying out some more uh, methods of content i'm not saying that gaming doesn't make it for me but you know you gotta diversify yourself man if not it gets boring if not life gets boring so yeah if you were interested in that sort of stuff a lot of sneaker unboxing uh get ready with me's every all that kind of stuff that you know kind of like fashion content is, is surrounded around right now uh head over to my instagram and my tiktok if you enjoy that sort of content i really really appreciate if you would support your boy out there and those social media channels as well but again this is a gaming channel so i'm gonna stick to gaming i've just been doing that and i've been working i'm an adult that's it that's all the the excuses i'm gonna give you as to why there hasn't been any videos any podcasts any streams uh, i did stream last week though i've been playing rumbleverse which is you know a good segue into this week's first section that i like to call what have i been playing i've been playing rumbleverse rumbleverse if you know you don't know what it is it's a free-to-play battle royale game but instead of shooting people down you wrestle these motherfuckers it is really fun it is a it, it, i don't know i just had so much fun with uh I, I think i played like a total of five six hours of it including streaming and it, it just it's a lot of fun there are some issues with the game um a lot of the i want to say like balancing a lot of the meta uh is not that it, it kind of limits a lot of the tactics or whatever approaches that you might want to do playing this game because of course it is really easy to get three teamed if you don't know what three teamed is in battle royale terms it basically means you're fighting uh an opponent and then a third person a third party comes along even a third uh a third team whatever comes from the side and get you know catches you if if it catches you on the on the on the wrong turn or catches you um distracted you're basically getting two teamed and it kind of makes it unfair to you um, of course it is the nature of the game that's the way the game is designed any battle royale game is designed that way um, but i think that the, a lot of the movements since it's all very close combat it, it kind of hinders a lot of the creativity that you might want to apply to these sort of situations but um, regardless of that it is a very fun game it is free to play um, i will say it is very very satisfying to jump from the top of a building with you know elbow first straight into a group of enemies and basically just KOing a couple of them because it's just it's so satisfying um as well as you also get a special start ability which is kind of like your power up or your special uh, i want to call it like an ultimate um and you basically just grab people shot up into the air and then from there you can uh, if you aim it correctly, you can bounce off cars, you can bounce off springs or whatever to um, basically increase that damage. It is really, really fun. I will not lie. It is really fun. It is also especially fun playing with squads. Right now, I think you can only play in duos, but either way, it is a very, very fun game. Um, it's a different game. It's a goofy ass game. And it's something that I was just missing from my life. Uh, but further to that point of playing goofy games, I have also been playing Splatoon 3. Yes, I no, I didn't get I, I, this is a story that I'm going to talk about, but the game has leaked. I'm not playing the leaked version. Nintendo, please do not strike my channel, okay? No, I did play the uh, Splat Fez that they did, I think, last week. Not last week, but the. Well, last Saturday, but the Saturday before the last Saturday. I don't know how to say that <laughs> in the correct terms, but. Yes, there was a uh, Splat Fest going on and uh, Nintendo released it for free to download. Anybody could check it out. Anybody can participate in the Splat Fest, but it was specifically for Splatoon 3. Now, I will say right off the bat, first impressions of Splatoon 3, it is Splatoon 2, but with 
a little more added content. I'm not going to say that it looks better. I'm not going to say that it plays better. It's basically Splatoon 2, but with a few quality of life improvements and a little added stuff that really makes it a little more fun to engage in the game. But at the same time, to me, to me, to me, it's going to it's, it's becoming increasingly difficult to kind of, I don't know, uh, what's the word? Like justify charging $60 for Splatoon 3. Now, hold on. Not saying that it's not worth it. What I'm saying is that it, it just, it's very similar to Splatoon 2 to me. That if I was coming on for the first time to this series and I see Splatoon 2 priced at $40 because it's been out since 2017 and I see Splatoon 3 priced at $60 and somebody asked me, hey, which one should I get? I mean, obviously, if you just want to get, you know, to kind of figure out and see what the game's all about, Splatoon 2 is probably going to be the best bet because Splatoon 3 does not, I don't think it adds that much to justify the price increase or i mean the full price to me in my opinion now don't get me wrong it's still a great game there's new weapons there's new items there's a bunch of different stuff there's new maps there's new uh, a, a couple i think if not i'm not mistaken a couple of uh new game methods or new gameplay uh modes i should say um but it, it's just I, I just don't understand i feel like this this is the sort of thing that i don't like about a lot of sequels is that they stick to the winning formula sometimes i'm um, not saying gameplay wise but like art style wise i think an easy way for a lot of designers or a lot of game pay, game developers can get away with you know basically using the same engine using the same uh, mechanics and this and that is to change up the art style a little bit because at least at then it feels new i know it's not necessarily new because you're still using the game engine mechanics etc but it's just very similar looking to me um and that, that kind of put me off a little bit. It put me off with Splatoon 3. Um, obviously, I might, I mean, I'm still going to get it if I can find it for still for $50 over at Walmart. Um, if you don't know, check your local Walmart when the releases, physical games switch. Usually they're $50. I think I heard through the grapevines that are kind of, they're going to stop doing that. Um, not entirely sure why. Uh, but yeah, that's how I've been getting mostly all of my physical games. I just go to Walmart and pay $50. I mean, that's $10 off. So. Why wouldn't you? Uh, but still, the Splatfest was fun. Uh, it's just Splatoon 2, but nicer. That's it. That's all I can say. Um, and besides that, there's just been such a huge drought right now for me, for my type of games, the games that I like. I'm not saying I'm not throwing shade at Xenoblade 3, not throwing shade at Live Alive. Those are still great games, and I really want to play Live Alive and Xenoblade 3. But for me, the games that I play, it's just been a drought that I've just re been replaying a lot of games. I've been replaying Super Mario Galaxy. I've been replaying um, Luigi's Mansion 3. Just a bunch of stuff that I really enjoy my time with. I'm about to start over Astral Chain because I haven't played that game in such a long time. And it's one of my favorite um, new Nintendo IP. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's it. That's all there's been to me playing games. <laughs> Jesus, man, these hiccups. Uh, but, yeah, um, how about... I'll start beating around the bush and just go through our main stories of the week. Apparently, uh, your boys at Nintendo can't keep a secret. So Splatoon 3 has appeared to leak online ahead of its release. Um, of course, there was a street date uh, being broken. I, I'm not going to comment too much about what I think about it. I just, you know, this is the nature I'm not going to comment too much about it. I don't think it's either morally or not morally correct. It really doesn't matter. This is the, the nature of the business. Retail is the way that it is. But it seems that some stores have broken street dates. And some of the content has been being has been uploaded to the internet. So if you're privy to these things, if you don't want to get spoiled, if you don't want any, any part of the game being spoiled for you, I would suggest you go ahead to your social media channels and mute certain words and mute Splatoon 3, mute Splatoon, mute gameplay, Splatoon gameplay, yada, yada, yada. If you're on the internet, you know how these things work. So you better just watch out for yourself because yeah, street dates have been broken. But Nintendo Life here reports that 
Um, it seems that another first party Switch game has leaked a week out from release. Um, if you head over to the Splatoon subreddit, social media, or YouTube, you should be able to see all sorts of spoilers related to the game's story mode, including boss leaks and more. The same subreddit is making an effort to shut down spoilers. Some players have been able to get hold of retail copies early, and from there, the floodgates have been seemingly opened. There are now also reports about the game's film files being dumped on PC with cracked versions of the game already circulating online. And if you're watching this over the video version on YouTube, you'll see that somebody posted a picture of them just having bought a copy off of somebody who got the game early. Um, now, Nintendo Live here further reports that the service for the Switch games multiplayer will not be live until the 9th of September. Switch leaks like this have previously happened to Paper Mario, Metroid Dread, the Pokemon games, and more recently to Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Now, yeah, I mean, that's that makes a lot of sense. I mean, they're not going to be able to play multiplayer. So at least some of the content, if you do get spoiled, some of the content will not be spoiled for you because it's not going to get, you know, they can't play multiplayer games. Uh, but yeah, if you're on the internet, watch out for spoilers. Now, do I think Nintendo can do anything to avoid these sort of situations no they cannot why because if you've ever worked at a store if you've ever worked retail you know that you get a lot of product ahead of time ahead of release dates why because it's such a hassle to stock to put these things out there and also there are schedules to follow their um uh, company sort of like they pay to be on the shelves of these big retailers so um, they usually schedule, you know, these times when they want to put these games out, et cetera, et cetera. So it is a complete orchestra of scheduling when it comes to these releases. Um, I've only ever saw it in clothing in in when I worked in a shoe department store, not a shoe department store, uh, just a shoe store. Um, they would send us uh, items that would send us inventory ahead of time and we would have to prep every single box be ready for it to be checked out as soon as you know corporate tells us hey you can start selling these boom 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 you're gonna make it in the system etc it's a, it's a huge thing so there's not much people can do nintendo they can't do much because once they send that out into the world it can get hijacked at any point of the supply chain so um just be careful this is the nature of the business with the internet now being so widely available anybody and everybody can just upload stuff that they're not supposed to be uploading but um i'm excited i'm still excited for this game um i do think it's uh i think it's gonna have a long life um i think it's gonna be very successful as we all know splatoon is one of the nintendo's biggest ips and it's still i think it's it's gonna slug along but i think it's gonna reach at least the the, the expectations that nintendo might have for such a big franchise as far as what i play what i've seen it's fun. It's a fun game. If you like shooters, if you like Call of Duty, if you like those types of games, you might enjoy. This is way more lighthearted and like this isn't focused on like killing enemies. It's more about like um, it's turf war. It's, it's you know, the, the person, the team who has painted, use more of their ink around the stage wins sort of deal. There's also kind of like a capture the flag type of mode uh which is on of uh, ranked i think ranked um i'm barely getting to splatoon 2 ranked but there is those type of modes which are really fun um they can be really stressful but again this is nintendo they're online kind of sucks i haven't had any issues as far as connectivity but as far as voice chatting and, and the implementations to make it easier to communicate with your teams non-existent so you might as well just get grab three friends and and get to discord and play this game set up a party and just play it because trying to communicate on splatoon is impossible there's no strategy to it it's just go ahead and shoot go ahead and try and win but which i kind of hate i think that's a huge a huge uh failure on splatoon's design process or design tactic it's just it doesn't make it, there's not a good ping system in the game which i i'm i'm really upset uh, as far as uh nintendo online uh games but it is what it is i'm excited for this can't wait for it to come out and we'll try and find a good price on it and if the yes if i can find it for 50 dollars or less i'm getting it if not i'm just gonna wait or buy a used copy because 
it's still it's I, it's still kind of hard for me to justify sixty dollars for what is essentially a, a better Splatoon two, a Splatoon two point five, if you will. I know I'm gonna get hate for that, but I do not care. All right, I do not care. <laughs> all right, but for our second news item of this week, this is gonna be a short video. I'm trying to keep these search and report a little bite sized. Not really. This is more like a half a sandwich sized. Uh, because I, there's too many podcasts out there that are a long, an hour long. You don't need to be hearing random strangers on the internet talk for an hour. Go outside. Just You just come here for the news and that's it. All right. So we're going straight into our second news item of the week. And this one, I'm not going to lie. I'm very excited for this. And I hope it is true. I do not believe rumors. I, do, I, I will always stop myself stop stop hyping myself up whenever there's a new rumor regarding nintendo because if nintendo doesn't say it it's not real if nintendo doesn't announce it it's not real to me but i will make an exception today why well jeff grubb jeff grubb if you don't know who jeff grubb is he does a podcast a weekly podcast with mike minotti of games beat it is I'm, i can't recommend that podcast enough it is really funny these two guys are some of the best in the business when it comes to video game journalism. They're really fair. They're really objective in the reporting. And Jeff hasn't been known to mess up um, any of these rumors, any of these announcements. He's had a very good track record when it comes to these sort of things. And they have a reputation behind them because they actually work in reputable, in quotes, um, <laughs> journal, uh, uh, yeah, publications um so they at least have something to defend and they don't just spout out certain things but at the same time you know we have the people at bloomberg that i'm not going to talk about but whatever um here video game chronicles video games chronicle reports a nintendo direct featuring wind waker and twilight princess is reportedly coming september now i just found out well not, i didn't just find out i i when i read this and and i listened to the podcast they're speculating that the Nintendo Reg, N Nintendo Reg will come as early as next week. The day of this recording is September the 6th. Today's a Tuesday. Next week is the week starting with, on the 12th. So if by this time next week, we're watching a Nintendo Direct, that is solely or at least a major part of it is focused on Legend of Zelda, it's over, man. Like, it's over. This is going to be a great way, first of all. Oh, okay. I'll get into the discussion later because I'm just getting way ahead of myself. But there's a lot to discuss about pricing. There's a lot to discuss about the future of this little old console called the Nintendo Switch when it comes to Zelda. Um, and also, comes, uh, there's a lot of discussion regarding um, uh, Nintendo being Nintendo, I guess. I guess that's the way I'll, I'll phrase it. But VGC here reports, um, according to GamesBeat managing editor Mike Minotti and Giant Bomb reporter Jeff Grove, who were speaking on a po podcast this week, a Nintendo Direct presentation focused on Zelda will reportedly be held in September. This is what Minotti, Mike Minotti says uh, on quotations. To be clear, guys, the one thing we are very, very sure is being announced at this Direct are the Wind Waker and Twilight Princess ports for the switch now that is a lot of certainty behind those words they say they are very very sure that this will be these two reports will be announced next week um here further uh gruff says yeah i think there's going to be a lot of zelda stuff with this thing i think this is like a zelda blowout for nintendo 100 uh, percent, there's a nintendo direct in september it's that simple there's still some uncertainty about whether this will be a general direct maybe a mini there but there was some talk of it being a partner direct Grub added, if they're going to have Zelda stuff there, this is not a partner direct. And those are the things that we've been hearing. The specifics that were name dropped were Twilight Princess and Wind Waker HD ports for the Switch. Which again, even had we not heard that, I would be speculating that that would be happening right now while we wait for the run-up for Breath of the Wild 2. And yet we have heard that and we've heard other things. Okay, this is going in circles. Um, again, Metro Pirate Remaster, which sounds... Like it's got to be announced as something like this. Metro Prime has been speculated. The remasters have been speculated for so long at this point that I just don't think, um, I just don't believe they're real at this point. But yeah, I'm definitely going to be wrong 
in like a week's time. Um, Grubb said he'd heard from a pretty good source that the event will take place during the week beginning September 12th. Twilight Princess and Wind Waker were already given the HD treatment on Wii U and are among just a handful of Nintendo's last-gen games that haven't been ported to Switch. Based on what he's heard about the Direct, Minotti said everything outside of the Twilight Princess and Wind Waker announcements is speculation. The Metro Pride thing seems like it should be happening. It's a lot of remasters to announce in one thing, but maybe that will be a little bit of a theme here. Uh, Metro Prime's long-expected Nintendo Switch remaster will finally release at the end of this year, Grubb recently claimed. He stated on a giant bomb show in June that he'd been told pretty definitely that the title will arrive in time for Prime's 20th anniversary this November. Metro Prime remasters have reportedly been coming for years, with one recognized insider claiming last November that Prime 1's remaster was already completed and ready to be released. Wow, this thing just, they just had to add that into the uh, the Zelda report, right? Zelda fans can't have their own thing ever. You ever notice that? We didn't get a Zelda 25th uh, anniversary like Mario did. Um, and now we're getting these articles and, you know, they just got to mention Metroid, even though they just got a game less than a year ago. They're about to be a year um, since the Metroid Dread release, but um, I believe it. I believe it because Jeff Grab has had a good track record when it comes to these things um and he never speaks um out of uncertainty like they said outside of the ports from zelda uh wind waker and twilight princess everything else is speculation so even then they're admitting that any that's the only thing they know so at least they're kind of holding information or at least not speaking out of uncertainty and just focusing on the things that they have confirmed um i'll, I'll be honest once these two games come to the switch I'm just going to be set for Zelda. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to say the Switch is going to be Nintendo's best console ever. It is the best library out there. I mean, they're still adding some stuff from NSO, which I hope they get to the GameCube because that would be exciting. Um, but that kind of raises a lot of questions, of course, regarding pricing. Is this going to be a $60 remaster, much like Twi uh, Skyward Sword was? I think it was two years ago. No, I know it was. It was last year, actually. Yeah, I was playing it on stream a year ago. Um, I hope not, because these are ports. These are going to be straight up ports because these games have already been remastered for the Wii U. It'd be a shame for Nintendo to price these at anything above anything above fifty dollars. I think is going to be way too much. But at the same time, they can justify the release if they release it as a bundle if they release it as two games in one you know two cartridges for the price of one i'd be happy with that because at that point you know much like we saw with 3d all-stars you're getting a better bang for your buck you're getting you know two games for 30 dollars each um 3d all-stars you got 20 you got three games for 20 dollars each which is in my opinion great it's a great deal um, but we'll have to see, we'll have to see. I mean, I was a big proponent of Skyward Sword not being priced higher than $40 because I just don't think that game is very good. I'm sorry. I don't care that it's remastered for HD. I know a lot of people love it. It is my least favorite 3D Zelda for many reasons, design wise, um, art style wise. There's just so many things that I just don't like about that game, but controls wise a big one motion controls can die for all i care um so it's going to be quite interesting the way that nintendo approaches this um as we all know uh this week the last of us remaster part one was just released for the ps5 and i think it was priced at 70 dollars. that is a game that has already been remastered and it is already available on the current platform like you can just buy the remastered version for the ps4 and it's going to play on the ps5 this version they just released supposedly is the better version it was completely remastered from the ground up i still don't think it should be priced at 70 dollars because of the same damn game from 2013 or whenever this game released but it's going to be interesting to see how nintendo fans zelda fans justify if nintendo releases both wind waker and twilight princess for anything other than $60 like to me that's gonna be that I don't think that's gonna lie I, I mean obviously people are just they're still gonna buy it it's Zelda but I think it's gonna they're gonna receive a lot of flack 
Uh, but it's gaming Twitter. I mean, it's gaming, the gaming world. Who cares, man? Like half of these things never amount to anything. People complain, complain. Oh, you're so greedy. Video game company, you're so greedy. Why, why are you, why are you charging us sixty dollars for this, this and that? At the same time, like it, it doesn't. The the life cycle of people complaining on the internet is like two months at best. So it'll just. I think, in my opinion, it's just gonna be interesting to see how Nintendo approaches this and and see what you know this means for Breath of the Wild two as far as timeline goes, releases. Um, and at the same time, it's just going to be exciting to see what the future of the Nintendo Switch is. Because once Wind Waker and, and Twilight Princess get ported to the Switch, the Wii U is pretty much dead. There's no more. There's no other reason to ever boot up a Nintendo Wii U, except, of course, for the uh, um, if you still have games on the um, virtual console. But besides that, most Wii U games have been ported over by the Switch uh, to the Switch. So what does that entail as we all know the switch has been out since 2017 um rumors do not stop coming out about the next iteration for nintendo as far as the console goes um uh, but what I, i'm more interested to see what this means now that we got all of the wii u library well not all but a huge majority of it um on the switch what does that mean now going forward like does this mean that we're just gonna end the cycle of the switch and start all over again or is the switch going to continue being more of like an iphone where it's just the same thing the same library but a little bit of upgraded specs here and there so i don't know i just think from today well till till the next nintendo direct which hopefully happens next week up until the release of breath of the wild 2 is going to be a very exciting time for nintendo i think they're hopefully getting ready or whatever the next step is i'm not saying the next iteration of the switch the next console generation but it's just i think right now is when nintendo is ready to make the next big step for their future so i just hope they consolidate everything into the switch i think it can handle it we already got nso we got nes snes nintendo 64 games i think it'd be great for them to start adding game boy games into the switch game boy advance games um i would love for gamecube games to be on the switch as well in the end uh, and being given the nso treatment but i just don't see that happening unfortunately especially now that we got the wind waker and twilight princess confirmed in quotes uh, for the Nintendo Switch, I don't think there's a huge appeal for Nintendo to put manpower into a GameCube NSO app um, when, I mean, some of the big hitters are already on the Switch. Um, of course, there's still Kirby Air Ride. Melee, I don't think Nintendo would want to put Melee on the Switch because they would sort of cannibalize their own product with Ultimate. As we all know, Melee still has a strong base. They have a huge following. People still compete in that game um, around the world. So I think Nintendo would not want to compete with their own game specifically made for the Switch, which is the uh, Super Super Bros. Uh, Super Mario. God damn it. Super Smash Bros. <laughs> Ultimate. But all in all, I'm excited to see what the next week and a half has in, in place for us. Um, of course, this Friday, Splatoon 3 releases. I'm excited for that. And besides that, the next thing that I'm looking forward to is, of course, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I don't care what you think about the graphics. I don't care what you think about the game, but it is Pokemon to me. I love Pokemon, so I'm excited for that. But folks, that's it. That's it for this week's Search and Report. I do apologize, and I'm not going to stop apologizing for... Actually, no, I, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to stop apologizing for not uploading videos, but at the same time, I'm not going to apologize for taking breaks. Same thing for you. You need breaks. You're a human being. Give yourself a break. Um, but yeah, I'm here. I'm back. I'm never going away. I'm always going to be uploading videos, especially gaming related. But I did say I'm exploring other avenues that I also thoroughly enjoy. Um, so if you enjoy that sort of content, I will say go ahead and, you know, subscribe subscribe follow me on on instagram and tiktok but folks if i stop uploading and for some odd reason you still want to keep up with me go ahead and follow me on twitter where i spent most of my waking hours and where i scream into the void that is social media believe me i spent too many hours on that godforsaken bird app 
As well, please make sure to follow me on Twitch where I try and stream pretty regularly and where your support is very greatly, greatly appreciated because it is more easily monetized than YouTube, but it is what it is. Um, as well, please make sure to join our Discord server where we talk anything and everything gaming, anime, TVs, movies, memes, anything that might interest you as my viewer. We also, you know, we're bilingual over at my Discord because as you know, I am Mexican as fuck. So also, if you speak Spanish, if you have, we want to come down and like talk to other Latinos, uh, Hispanics, just come down here and, and, you know, just join the discourse over and have fun. That's it. That's all it is. Uh, but folks, please. Oh, shit. Yeah, I forgot. I do have an audio version of this podcast. Um, if you're watching on the YouTube version um, over on my YouTube, please subscribe. Thank you. Uh, but you can also listen to this on the go on your favorite podcast listening apps out there but our main one is spotify so just search for search and report our logo is a little game boy with the word search and report on top of it um make sure to review it make sure to follow it make sure to subscribe to it i would greatly greatly appreciate it because that helps us a lot but folks i've been true fernie thank you i'm back i never left i've always been here but i'm back and yeah we got a lot to look forward to as Nintendo fans. Hopefully, hopefully, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess are those things that we got in their future. All right, please take care of each other, but most importantly, take care of yourself. All right, peace. <laughs>